A, I'm going to walk you through how to get Stable Diffusion Web UI running, or otherwise known as Automatic 11.11. This is a way to get Stable Diffusion running locally on your computer. And before you do this, you will need some technical knowledge. It's not straightforward. It's a bit complicated. There's a lot of complicated parameters. You might not know how they work. There's also a requirement, which is you need a GPU. So I'm running this on a Mac M2. Uh, there's also you know Windows version for NVIDIA style GPUs if you have a gaming PC, but that's something that needs to happen because it can't. It's pretty heavy load uh, and it can't really run um, just on your normal computer. You need a graphics processing unit, a GPU. Cool. This is Stable Diffusion Web UI. Just want to show you what it looks like when it's running, and then we'll talk about how to install it. I'm in the Stable Diffusion Web UI folder. And then I just say bash uh, webui.sh and it's running and it's going to install anything it needs and get it to the place uh, where it's actually running. You might get some error messages here, which you'll have to figure out. <laughs> Sometimes it's a bit complicated. Like I said, there's a technical ability to it. Uh, so this is just installing the requirements. And once it's running, it will be available on this URL, which you'll be able to grab from the terminal. So. Uh, I have a few extensions installed to try it's bringing you some of these things in. Okay. Yeah, here we go. This is a URL, so you can see there. Just paste it. All right, we have it. So we can change models up here. I'm using the standard Stable Diffusion, the V15. The a lot of people use version 1.5 over the version 2 or plus models just because it's a bit more flexible. There's a lot of uh, user generated type content. People have trained models based on this that are quite useful. And all of those, like when you download them, they show up here. The, I'll give you a quick example. So just say like a cat wearing a cape and hit generate. And this is where you put the prompt. You can also do negative prompts in here. There's, you know, a, a lot of uh, functionality in terms of the parameters and stuff you can change. Uh, don't worry about that too much right now. We'll, we'll cover that. Uh, so here we go. There's a cat generated with a cape. And then I'm just going to show you how that looks like a different model. So this is a cat wearing a cape. And actually, by the way, one thing that's interesting is uh, every image that's generated, the prompt is saved as metadata in the image. So you can also see the seed and what model you used, etc. what sampler. Uh, that's a cat wearing a cape. I'm just going to show you, I'm just going to try the ink punk diffusion model. And that's working. And if you are downloading a model, I'll just get generate here. If you're downloading a new model, say from Civitai, bear in mind that some of these are not safe for work. But if you download the model, then you need to put it into your folder here. So this is Stable Diffusion Web UI. And then there's this models folder. And then you have Stable Diffusion. And this is where you stick it. And when, when it's there, then uh, you can just hit this refresh and uh, it should show up uh, or you can restart. Yeah, here we go. So this ink point diffusion, it didn't do anything different really because I didn't use the trigger word, but specifically there's a trigger word and and vink punk and V ink punk. If I hit generate, it's going to do it in this style. So this is a dream booth model that we can use, but there are you know lots of different uh, types. Some have trigger words, some don't. You can see how that works. Yeah, here we go. So now it's in the ink punk style where you can see it's diffusing towards that. There we go. An ink punk cat in a cape. It looks a lot cooler. You can change the sampling steps. That's how many, uh, you know, how long to run diffusion process. You can also change the sampler. I just used Euler A, Ancestral, that stands for. There's a, a lot of differences between them, but the ones that stand out, a lot of people use Euler A, a lot of people use uh, DPM plus two Karas, this one here. And then DDIM, DDIM, that was like the original one that was like made specifically for stable diffusion, I think. This is how many images you get. So this would generate four images in a row. And then this batch size is like how many images per batch they can be multiplied together. If you if you don't have a lot of VRAM, then your batch size, you want to keep that small because it's generating at the same time. It can 
really lag on your computer. A CFG scale is how much of a difference the prompt makes. Um, so how close it is to the prompt versus how creative. So it's similar to temperature on um, the uh, GPT-3 or GPT-4 interface. You can ha add extensions here. So I've added control net, which I'm not gonna walk in, but uh, walk you through, but there's uh, a lot of like cool stuff you can add in here and they'll show up in different places in the user interface. The way that you add extensions is if you go here, oh, sorry, extensions and then available load from, and it loads it all from this uh, this JSON file and you can see which ones there are and what they do and then you can install them. Uh, you can also load them from a URL if you just find one out there on the web. But obviously be careful because you're loading code. Some of them show up as their own separate tabs. In Paint Anything is one example. They have, in some cases, they have like settings here that you can change. There's also like a lot of built-in extensions like the image to image stuff. Uh, you have inpainting in here which I won't go through. You have a uh, interrogate clip, so you can reverse engineer the prompt from an image, which is pretty cool. Uh, there's a lot of parameters here you can mess around with. There's also the different scripts you can run. Uh, so like the XYZ plot would generate, you could generate like say the same image, but with five different values for CFG scale, for example. Uh, so there's, there's a bunch of different uh, things you can do here in the extras is where you do the scaling. Uh, so if you want to upscale the image to a higher resolution or higher size, and then this is where you do it in extras. You can also do batch processing for multiple images if you need to. Cool. That's that's the user interface. Uh, and if you ever get confused or you don't know what different things do, the wiki here is really good. Like it has a pretty detailed understanding of what these different things are you know check on that but to install specifically i'll just show you what i did to install on the mac uh, and this is on the apple silicon so this is the m1 and 2 max in particular i used homebrew right once you have homebrew you run uh, this in the terminal uh, so if i just press Control c to cancel this if you run that it will install the CMake and, and protobuf and git we get if you don't have them uh, and then you just do a git clone when you're in your folder and you and that will just pull down from github all the stable diffusion web ui code and that will give you that local folder that i was showing you before then you need to download the stable diffusion models it has some examples here like where you can get them from uh, version 1.5 is the one that I use. There's also a special one for inpainting, uh, which is quite useful. And or there's version two, uh, if you want as well. And uh, typically you just click it, and it will take you out to somewhere like Hugging Face, where you can you know download the model. The files and versions are in here, and I think basically you just need this checkpoint file here. So if you click that, it'll start downloading. Okay, then once you have once you have that available, uh, you, you drop that in your models folder, and then you can just CD, like change directory into Stable Diffusion Web UI, and then run bash web UI .sh, or just this dot forward slash web UI .sh, And that will do everything for you. Now, if you're running any issues, it, there, there's actually quite a lot of information here. There's like all these issues you can search through. And if you just search for the error message you're getting, quite often people have already written how to solve it. There's a lot of pull requests where they're trying to improve some of the UI and some of the issues that you run into, and there's like specific discussions. So that is that, that is how to get it running on Mac. On Windows, uh, so let's assume you have an NVIDIA GPU. Again, the process is similar. They don't have a homebrew. On the win on Windows, but basically the way it works is you download the and extract the zip file, and then you double click the update dot bat, and then that will get it to like the latest version essentially. And then there's a run dot bat script. You just click that, and that should launch it. It will download like all the files that you need, and then you should see this like running on URL, and it's the same URL that you get on a Mac. So that is that should work on your computer if you have a GPU, but there's also like multiple methods if you have issues. So you can do the git clone method like you do on Mac. You, you could also do, uh, you can also use on Linux. And there's different instructions, by the way, if you have an NVIDIA GPU versus if you have an AMD GPU. So uh, just pay attention to that.
But in general, it's always the same thing. You get the code from GitHub, and then run um, run like the Windows the .bat file or the .sh file, depending on which file system you're on. All right. Hopefully, uh, that's helpful. Um, because this is open source, you can literally just have a look and see how they do different things. Um, if you want to know how do they do the, you know, how do they input all the prompts from a file, you can just see, you know, how they've done that because the code here. You can make uh, updates to this if you want, just locally, or you could actually push them back into the main repository for other people to benefit from. So yeah, lots of fun. You're going to learn a lot about image generation when you can just generate these images for free on your own computer and just leave it running. So you know, have fun with it to check out all the different parameters and look up the definitions of what they are. And uh, that's really the best way to learn. It's just experimentation. All right. Hopefully that was helpful.